With a population of just over 10,000, Greymouth is the largest town on the west coast of New Zealand's South Island. It was laid out near the mouth of the Grey River at the beginning of the Westland Gold Boom in 1865. Three major industries have emerged since the arrival of Europeans around 140 years ago. Coal was discovered in the 1860s by early explorers to the region and this was soon followed by the discovery of gold. The west coast has been endowed with high rainfall for millions of years. The gradual weathering effect of the rain has brought a steady stream of gold down from the mountains and with a profuse growth of vegetation, large areas of forest and deposits of underground coal have formed. With a reduction in the amount of native timber available due to heavy logging, many timber mills have closed and those still remaining are now cutting new exotic varieties. The Grey River Valley, once the scene of feverish mining activity, is now the focus of the gold and timber industries around Greymouth. Scattered along its length are examples of current industrial activity in the way of sawmills and the Nahiri Gold Ridge, along with preserved coal mines such as those of Brunei. In 1968, a group of Greymouth Railway and vintage car enthusiasts got together to discuss the idea of forming a society for the care and preservation of local relics. And, resulting from this meeting, the West Coast Historical and Mechanical Society Incorporated was created. This look at Shantytown, the replica village they created, shows a glimpse of how early Greymouth settlers lived as the region developed. In 1968, a Greymouth resident visited Knott's Berry Farm in Los Angeles. He was inspired to build a replica mining township in Greymouth and on his return home created enough interest to get the project started. The aim was to give visitors an experience of the everyday life of early European and Asian settlers. Shantytown has become an accurate representation of the buildings and businesses that flourished during those early times. At the peak of the gold rush in the 1860s, the area in and around Shantytown was home to some 5,000 prospectors and their families. The gaunt heaps of stones that the miners called tailings are now masked by the encroaching native bush, but at one time the area was alive with Chinese diggers and wild colonial boys tearing into the land with gold dredges and sluices to prize out its glittering rewards. Shantytown is a living monument to these hardy pioneers who forded wild rivers and scrambled through rugged rainforest in search of their fortunes. It has become one of New Zealand's leading tourist attractions. Many of Shantytown's buildings have been recreated and some have been moved to their present sites from other locations. The church, built in 1865 in the gold mining town of No Town, and the two-storied Ross Town Hall are two examples. Other shops and buildings commemorate the entrepreneurial talents of early shopkeepers and tradesmen. These men and women, settling in a new land, turned their hands to all types of work with primitive tools, forging the country we know now. The Marsden Valley School at the end of the main street was established in 1998 and is funded by the Ministry of Education under its initiative for learning experiences outside the classroom. The school offers half and full day programs in which students get the opportunity to experience a late 19th century classroom. Dressed in the clothes of the day, the students get a full formal classroom program with the emphasis 
on learning the way their great great grandparents did. Our quick look around the township has given only a brief insight to the early days that Shantytown recreates. Amongst the valuable collection of pioneer relics are some true gems. The vast and significant collection housed in the historic buildings enables visitors to wend their way through the town as interlopers into a bygone era. There's gold in them thar hills, a 19th century expression that's still alive on the west coast. Virtually every rock-bound riverbed yields secrets of heritage gold diggings. It was the discovery of gold in the South Island that led to a series of gold rushes and the establishment of what soon became a major industry. In 1856, the first gold in New Zealand was found in the Takaka district and rushes commenced to other parts of the country, finishing with finds on the west coast in 1865. Recorded gold production in 1866 reached 735,000 ounces, a level that has not been exceeded since then. The early miners used primitive equipment, gold pans and sluice boxes, with the gold-bearing gravel being shoveled by hand. Hydraulic methods, using high-pressure water, were first developed to work elevated terrace deposits, and water races were built over long distances, often through rough terrain, to convey water to the mine sites. The area around Shantytown was once the scene of feverish activity as gold miners sought to extract gold from the alluvial gravels that make up the underlying ground. The atmosphere of these workings, including the many Chinese immigrants who found their way here, are portrayed in the authentic displays recreated at Shantytown. We'll take some time now to journey around the displays and listen to the background sounds of the native forest.
With increasing activity on the coast during the latter part of the 19th century, the need for timber increased. With an abundant supply of native forests, sawmilling operations sprang up in many locations. In the 1920s, a local logging company, Ogilvies and Company, built the line that the Shantytown Railway now follows. On the way up the valley, the Shantytown steam train passes by the Infants Creek Sawmill, stopping there on the return journey. Opened in 1987, the mill and its 65 horsepower single cylinder Ruston Hornsby diesel engine were shifted from Ikematua near Efton. This large engine sits on 25 cubic metres of concrete to absorb the 12 tonnes of pressure created by the firing stroke. Now watch as the shantytown sawmillers show how timber was milled in the early part of the 20th century in the fully functioning Infants Creek Sawmill. One of the major attractions at Shantytown is the steam-operated railway. Running for one kilometre along the formation of the Bush Tramway, built in the early part of the 20th century, it was originally used to haul logs to a sawmill, situated near the present road gateway. The locomotive being used is Kaitangata, an improved version of the New Zealand Government Railway's F-Class engines. Built for the Kaitangata Coal and Railway Company in 1896, it worked on an 8km line from Kaitangata to Stirling in Otago until replaced by a diesel engine in 1969. It was donated to Shantytown two years later and has been used on the 364 day a year operation in conjunction with another engine for much of the time since then. A 20-minute trip to the top of the line departs each hour from the Shantytown station, situated near the main entrance. This is a replica of some early stations built by the government railways in locations throughout New Zealand. The two carriages on the train have been built at Shantytown itself, on the frames of freight wagons, as the line has the steepest gradient in use by a railway in New Zealand. For safety reasons, the carriages are pushed up by the engine. Let's now take a trip and enjoy the scenery along the track, echoing to sounds from the past. Thank <laughs> you. 
it's the end of the day. The locomotive is back in its shed and it will rest there until fired up for another day of duty tomorrow.